Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to connect an encoder to an S7-1200 and use its built-in high-speed counter. But before we do, first I want to say a big thanks to uh, IFM for sending in the encoders, they're great, and also to Siemens for sending in the S7-1200. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the encoder itself and we'll talk about the wiring. I know I've used this encoder in a number of videos, so um, you may already be familiar with it, so I won't spend too much time on it. But this is the uh, RVP510 from IFM. It's also an IO Link encoder, so we'll actually use it with IO Link in the future. But um, this unit is set up out of the box with uh, 1,024 pulses per rev, and you can see I can turn it here, and it's going. And if we take a look at the wiring here, let me just move this up some. And um, you can see there we got the uh, positive and negative for the encoder. We got the A, A naught, B, B naught, Z, Z naught. And you can see all I've wired into the uh, S7-1200 is the A and the B. That's all I'm using, okay? So now I think I got the uh, terminal block cover doors open here so we can see over here. I wired this in the six and seven because in some of my other videos, I'm using zero through five for other things. So that's why I have it in six and seven. And if we come along here, and let me put this over here instead, and we turn it, okay, you can see those two lights blinking on and off, right? Six and seven. Okay, so our job now is going to be to write a program in TIA portal um, to actually use those inputs with a high-speed counter. So to do that, let's go over to the computer. And here you can see I'm in TIA portal. And I'm just going to do a new project. And we'll just call this, let's see, we'll call it project, uh, let's say S7-1200 HSC. How's that? All right, we'll create it. Okay, and now I'm going to come over here and add a new device. And, you know, there's so many different ways of doing this. Um, you know, you can use the portal view, the wizard, and all that. But I'm just going to do it manually today. And I think the unit I have is a... Well, let me go look here. we got a couple of them. This is a 1214C. So let's go 1214C. And ours is a version 4 point something. So, um, you know, I tried doing it as a two and three and it wouldn't download. It said, nope. So I had to come in here and change it to a version four anyway. So I'm not going to do that, but I am going to let it choose the latest and we'll see what the issues that cause. Um, because I believe I got a four to one firmware in the unit and this is four, four. So we'll just let the software choose that and then we'll see how we have to fix that after the fact. So let me click on okay here. And we'll give it a minute to go ahead and create our project for us. Now, I'm not even going to add any logics to this. I mean, there is a HSC instruction that has a lot of features to it, but I'm not even going to use that. Um, first thing, though, I do want to give this an IP address here. 01 is not valid on my network. I want to do 1, and this guy wants to be 113. I already downloaded the test program, so he's already 113. And um, so that's what I wanted to do there with the Ethernet address. So that's good there. The next thing I want to do is I want to go and set up the I.O. here. So I'll go to, uh, let's see here. I want to go down the high-speed counters. And, and the great thing is, this has six. You know when we did the Micrologix, uh, we did the Micrologix 1100, it had one, right? It had four high-speed inputs, but only one high-speed counter. And then the Compact Logix we did had four. Two could be used for encoders. This guy has six. And... Um, you know, that's just really cool. And I'm going to use number six here, and uh, I'm going to enable it. And now, the next thing I want to do is I want to change it, right? I do want it to be a counter, but you know what? I want it to be AB, because I wired in AB, right? So why not? And um, the other thing I want to change here is the actual I.O. it's using. Now, you can either scroll through this list here or go right to it, right? So let me come down here. Hardware inputs. You see it's using... Three and four. I don't want it to use three and four. I want it to use six and seven. So let's go ahead and choose six and seven. Excellent. Okay, now you think this might be all we have to do, right? Could be. It isn't, but it could be, right? So let me show you why this won't work. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do compile here. 
Make sure everything's new and up and refreshed. And look at this right here. Input six is configured for high speed, but the input filter may not be suitable for high speed. And I'll show you why. And if you watch one of our previous shows, you probably know why, but we'll download it and see what happens anyways. So let's go ahead and download here. Okay, we'll search. Just give it a moment here. And you can see the other one, which I have in the house, the 1212, because I'm rating my lesson plans for my new S7-1200 course that I hope to offer here by the end of the year. But um, we don't want that one. We want this one, because this is the one out here. And um, let's go ahead and load this new program into it. Okay, and look, what does it say? Online connection failed. Incompatible firmware revision. Really? So let's go ahead and cancel, right? And because this is, let me go ahead and change the device. This is a 4.4, but that isn't a 4.4, right? I know it's a 4.2.1. So I can't download a 4.4 program to a 4.2 firmware. So let's go ahead and change it here. We'll go, um, now when I was thinking about this, I'm like, well, maybe I'll just go all the way down to 4.0, right? But look at these errors I get. Hey, uh, HSCs are not supported in 4.0. So let me say 4.1. Well, same thing. How about 4.2? Good. 4.2 is supported. And uh, the good news here is um, I can easily change it backwards, right? Some controllers, you can't do that. Some vendors aren't, don't allow you to downgrade the version of the, uh, of the controller that you're doing. So that's cool. And then, um, you know, thankfully, I already have 4.2 firmware in there. So I will be able to use the HSCs. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And of course, I could always upgrade the firmware if I wanted to. But um, for now, we're just going to use 4.2, which is in it. OK, so let me go ahead and compile again, make sure I have no errors. Oh, I still have those input filters. We'll see what that means in a moment. Let's go ahead and download it. OK, let's continue without syncing. No action. Let's go ahead and stop all because I'm wiping out that program and putting a new one in there. Okay, now it's going to start it back up, so let's finish. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is, because I haven't even written a program to use any of this, I figured we'd create a watch window and uh, watch the tags that way. Now, one thing we need to know, though, is what is the um, what is the address I'm looking at? I really don't care about 6 and 7. They're going to be going on and off, on and off, right? What I really care about is the actual counting value, okay? So here, you know, if I look through HSC 6, when you get down here to the bottom, you will see the count address. So there's a 6 and 7, right? We'll keep going. 10, 20. Okay, so that's what I've got to remember. It's 10, 20 through 10, 23. So that's four bytes. So that's a double word. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a watch window here. And I'm going to do percent I for input, D for double word, 10, 20. Okay, we'll hit enter. It's saying hex, I don't want to look that in hex. <laughs> the hex with that, I want plus or minus decimal. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and um, monitor this here. So hit monitor. Okay, monitoring value is a zero. Let me grab the encoder here and I'll turn it. Okay, you can see it's counting up. Now I'm going to stop turning it fast. <laughs> It's not doing anything, right? That's because those input filters, we never change them. So if I turn it very slow, yeah, it counts up. But if I turn it fast, it doesn't. So we got to fix that. Let's go ahead and go offline. And do I have it up here? Yep, let's go to the inputs, right? See if we can't fix that. Okay, here's my digital inputs. Okay, there they are. And really what I want to do is I want to change 6 and 7. Uh, let's just go, I don't know, I don't know if there's a downside of going as fast as you can, but if you know me, you know I like to go as fast as you can. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if that's going to do anything to the control. I'll have to ask my good friends over at Siemens that. But with that change, or maybe you know, so let me know if you do. With that change, again, I'm going to select the controller here. I'm going to compile everything and then I will 
download. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and load it in. Okay, and then we'll finish. Okay, so let's bring our watch window back up. Let's monitor. Okay, let me come out here to the field here and see if we can't put everything together. I think I'll zoom back in a little bit here. Maybe pull this down. All right, so here we can see. Don't want to electrocute myself. <laughs> Let's see, I'm turning it. You can see the six and seven going on and off. And we can see the monitoring value for 1020. It's going up. And I'm going to turn it fast. Yeah, look out, look at that. I'm not missing anything, right? Okay, and I can go in the reverse direction here. And there we go. And so that's how easy it is to set up the high-speed counter and the S7-1200 with an encoder. Now, you may want to use the HSC instruction, or I think there's an advanced version too, or extended version of it too, because you may want to reset it, or you may want to preload it. There's all these things you may want to do in your code, so that's why you may want to use that instruction. But I thought for this video, to kind of stay in step with the previous ones we did, we would just show the basics of connecting up the encoder to the S7-1200 and what you needed to do, the minimum steps you needed to do to get that HSC working. And again, I want to thank IFM and uh, Siemens for sending the uh, samples in. And with that said, I want to thank you all for uh, watching. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and a sub. And thank you all for helping us break the 12,000 sub mark. I never thought we'd see 10,000. Now we're already at 12,000. So thank you all very much. And thank everybody who visits theautomationblog.com over there. We had our best month ever. We served over 50,000 people. We're up to 1.5 million unique people that have come and, uh, you know, been helped by our articles and videos. So just excited about that. Excited about all the vendors who are working with us, like Siemens and IFM. And we got new ones coming in. We got... PNF, we got SMC and others who have just been great. Mitsubishi sent in a new HMI, so can't wait to get onto that. And uh, just more stuff to, to go over and share with you. But with that, that's going to end it for today. Again, if you enjoyed the show, please give us a like and a sub. And I just want to wish you all a very safe, happy, and healthy week. And until next time, my friends, peace.